Good evening, everyone. Welcome again to our Wednesday night Bible class as we study God's Word together uh, on a Wednesday night. Let me encourage you, go ahead and get your Bibles. Uh, you're going to need your Bibles tonight. I want you to follow right along with me. I want you to be like the Bereans, that you want to search the Scriptures to see whether or not the things that I be saying uh, are true or not. So I'm going to give you time to get your Bibles and open them up to Psalms 116. Uh, we are going to be back in this particular Psalms tonight. And I want to apologize on last Wednesday night, uh, our phone call for our conference, it dropped and many of you were not able to come back on and you didn't get to hear the entire message uh, from last week. So what I'm going to do is kind of back back up and kind of bring us up to date of where we are. Actually, we stopped off in verse one, in verse 15 of Psalm 116. But before we get started into our lesson tonight, let us together pray. Father, again, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege just to be able to come and study your word tonight. Father, we pray that you uh, give us a heart ready to receive uh, your word tonight. Use me mightily, uh, pour out of me those things that you have poured into me so that all of us will be uplifted and encouraged uh, by your holy and divine word. Again, we thank you and continue to pray for those that are sick, continue to pray for those that are in bereavement uh, at this particular time. Forgive us, Father, the things we have done which have been contrary uh, to your will. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, everybody got their Bibles tonight? Oh, I think I'm looking. I can't see South. Some of you all ain't got your Bible open. You ain't got it open to Psalm 116, verse 15. Uh, go ahead and get it. Uh, you got your uh, hard copy. Uh, be turning to this passage. You got your electronic. Uh, Bible, uh, just click in Psalms 116, verse 15 tonight. Last week, we got down to verse 15. And I was talking about verse 15, which actually states, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And that's why we ended off. And, and I was telling you last week that it may be possible that we have quoted that verse and we have explained that verse, but we really have not kept that verse in its proper context. So what I want to do tonight, uh, I want to keep verse 15 in the context of Psalms 116. But let me first kind of give you a definition of the word precious. This is what we talked about last week. Uh, it actually comes from the Hebrew word, uh, yakar. And yakar literally means that which is noble or that which is valuable, that which is prized or costly, that which is splendid and excellent and honorable, that which is high worth. And that's what we looked at last week. When we, If you look up the word precious, those are the, the definitions that that word is going to, uh, to give. Now, we talked about context. Now, all of you all that are Bible students, you know that context is uh, important. Context is important in anything uh, we do, anything we say. It's, uh, taking it out of context, you can really do a lot of harm. But if you keep it in the context, now we are familiar with that. If you've been watching the political scenes and all of the debates and everything that have been going on for the last few months, you have noticed how people would take certain things, maybe a candidate would say, and they would take it out of the context of which they was using it. And when they do that, they can make it mean just about anything uh, they want it to mean. Well, we do the same thing sometimes when it comes down to biblical interpretation. 
Uh, Sometimes we'll reach in there and we'll grab a verse and take it out of context and make it mean something that maybe the original author did not have in his mind uh, when he said that. So we want to look tonight. What did the psalmist have in his mind when he says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of uh, his saints? But we first, last week, we defined context. And I did tell you context is the circumstances that form the setting of an event or a statement or an idea and in terms of which it can be fully understood and accessed. Another definition of context is the parts of something written or spoken that immediately precedes and follows a word or passage and clarify its meaning. Now, I like this definition because once you understand this definition, it's going to help you when you go through your Bible and you read in it and you try to interpret certain passages. Let me give you that definition again. It is the parts of something written or spoken that immediately precede and follow a word or passage that clarify its meaning. So context then is very, very important. So let's look at this particular verse. Now, this whole psalm, Psalm 116, is actually about praising God for a life preserved. It's about being saved from death. It's not about death being a good thing. The psalmist, in this particular chapter, wrote about an occasion on which he almost Die. Now, let's look at this particular verse in its context, okay? Now, here's what I want to do tonight. Now, again, you got your Bibles, so I want you to follow right along with me. Now, if context is that which precedes and that which follows a certain word or passage, then we want to look at what precedes uh, verse 15, and then we're going to look at what follows verse 15, okay? Now, back back up with me to verse number 3. Well, in verse number 3, he said, The snares of death compass me. The pains of Sheol, you may, may have uh, the hell have gotten me. It have laid hold on me. And he says that I suffer distress and uh, anguish. You see, Sheol is the realm uh, of the dead. The psalmist is saying that he was in the grips of death. But then you get to verse 4. He said, but I cried, O Lord, and I prayed unto the Lord, and I asked the Lord to deliver my soul. Now, when you read in your Bible, especially in the Old Testament, when it talks about the soul, it is simply talking about a person's life in the most natural sense. A person's soul is simply his being, his existence, his life. So the psalmist, cries out for God to save him uh, from uh, dying. But then you get to verse 5, and verse 5 says, And the Lord saved him because the Lord is gracious, and he is righteous, and he is merciful. Now, verse number 6 said, Then in great praise, 
the psalmist declared that the Lord did save him. Now, I want you to keep all of these passages in mind preceding verse 15, okay? Keep in mind, he was death that had a hold on him. He cried out to God that God was saving. God heard his cry. And God saved him. And now in great praise, he thanks God for saving him. But then you get to verse 7. And verse 7, now the psalmist's soul can rest. Because he had been what? Saved from death. He's no longer anxious. He's no longer afraid as he was before. Why? Because God have saved him from death. Now keep verse 8 and verse 9 in the context. For this verse is, is the most serious, I believe, of all of them in this text. He said, for you have delivered my soul from death. But not only that, you delivered my eyes from tears. And not only that, you kept my feet uh, from stumbling. And because of what you have done uh, for me, Lord, because you have saved me from death, because you delivered my soul and you kept my eyes from crying uh, and, and you kept me from stumbling and slipping, he said, I will walk before the Lord. Now notice where he's going to walk. He says, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Now, why did he say, I'm going to do that in the land of the living? Because God had delivered his life, his soul, his very existence. God had delivered him from death. And now he's going to walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Now you get to verse 12. Now in verse 12, the psalmist did not die as he thought he might. Now that's the whole point of this psalm. Is that the psalmist thought he was going to die. But guess what? He didn't die like he thought. He was going to die. So the psalmist continues in his praise to God for saving his life, wondering what sort of gift he should give God to show the gratitude that he have for God for saving his life. Now notice verses 14 and verse 18, which is going to proceed and which is going to follow verse number 15. He promised he will be faithful to the Lord uh, paying uh, his vows. In other words, whatever it was that he had promised God that he was going to do, he made a vow that he was going to do that. When? If God saved his life, keep him from dying, protect me. He said he made a vow to God. And because God kept his part of the deal, guess what the psalmist said? I'm going to keep my part of the deal. But what is your part? My part is I'm going to keep the vows that I made uh, with the Lord. But why are you going to keep them, David? David said, I'm going to keep them. Because God saved me from dying. But then you look at verse 16. Now I'm going to jump past verse 15. In verse 16, he said, all this praise that he's given God is because God kept him from dying. So he praising God. He thanking God. He's showing his gratitude for God. And he's keeping uh, his promise and his vows. 
Now let's look at verse 17. Because 17 says, I will offer sacrifices of thanksgiving. Now why would he offer th sacrifices of thanksgiving? He's going to offer sacrifices of thanksgiving because he's so thankful that God heard his cry. God saved his life. And now he no longer have to be afraid. And now he can rest because of what God have done. Here then, when I look at this, so we are left wondering. Why would a person say his own death would be precious in the sight of God in the context of him saying how horrible death is and how thankful he is to have been saved from it? Now, let me say that again. When I looked at verse 15 in the context of this chapter, I can't help but to wonder why would he say that death would be precious in the sight of God, especially in the context of where he says that death is horrible. I don't want to die. I don't want to leave. Lord, save me. And then he turned right around and thanked God because God heard his cry and God saved him from death. So what then is precisely the psalmist is saying? So when I look at verse number 15, now, again, as I said last week, I have used this verse over and over and over, and most of the time, I would use it at a funeral. And most preachers use this verse at a funeral. And they say, don't worry about your loved one. If they are saint, if they are in Christ, precious that they have died because God says precious to me when one of my own children die. Well, Possibly that can be true, simply because if you are a Christian and you die in the Lord, you will be immediately ushered right on into the presence of God. But that's more precious for you than it is for God. For Paul says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So precisely what is the psalmist saying? When we look at this verse and we use this verse, if you keep it in the context, God, the, what he's really saying is that God doesn't take death of his saints lightly. He don't take the death lightly. Why? Because what God is going to do, he values our life so much that he valued the life of the psalmist so much that he preserved his life. He did not let uh, him uh, die. So God doesn't take the death of his saints lightly. Yeah. God values his saints and values their death. Why? Because it is a costly thing uh, in his sight. Amen. So God preserved the psalmist's life. Which is why in the case of this particular psalm, God preserved the life of his saints. So what does, in what light does God regard the death of his saints. We are not, now, now hear me closely, we are not to understand that death of his saints is pleasing to God, but rather that he places 
a high value upon the death of his saints. So let me conclude by saying this uh, on tonight. In my conclusion of this particular verse, God does not regard the death of his saints lightly and therefore hastens to protect them. That's what he did for the psalmist, and that's what he'll do for us. Now, do not misquote me. Do not say that I said something that I did not say. Out of context. What I'm saying is, in the context of this chapter, keep verse 15 in the context. Don't just reach in and grab verse 15 and pull it out. What precedes it? And what follows this verse? If you see what precedes and what follows, you will come more closely to understanding why the psalmist says, precious in the sight of God is the death of his saints. What he really said, it is very costly to God. Mm -hmm. God don't take it lightly. But God don't really feel good about his saints dying. And if we're going to quote that verse, it's all right to use it. But if you use that verse at a funeral, then you need to make sure you give the family the context of that verse. Because if you and I, and I am as guilty as anyone else, but if you and I do not give the family the context of that verse, we may be misusing what the psalmist says. And I often have taught the word aim, A-I-M, which literally means the author's intended meaning. What did the psalmist mean when he said, Precious in the sight of God is the death of his saints. So my last point is this. The point is not that God delights and finds satisfaction in the death of his followers. That's really not what the psalmist is saying. He does not say that God delights in finding satisfaction when one of us die. The psalmist who has been delivered from death affirms that the life-threatening experiences of God's followers gets God's attention. Those that have been delivered from death. Now keep in mind, the psalmist had been delivered from death. And it affirms that the life-threatening experiences of God's followers, the saints of God, we get God's attention. Why? Because God don't take our death lightly. Amen. God does not take our death at nonchalant. It is a very costly thing. It is a very high worth thing to God that when one of his saints die. So context is everything. Now again, I want you to remember, always keep the verse in its context. Okay? Now, I ain't got time to go into Psalm 117 tonight. I am prepared for the a number two verses, but actually those two verses is a whole lesson within itself. I'm going to leave 117 to next week, and I hope that our study together has been a very encouraging. Now, again, if you want to use Psalms 116, verse 15, and you just want to say precious 
in the sight of the Lord at the death of his saint. If he's a saint and he's in the presence of God, it's more precious to you than it is God. But it's a high value thing to God. Yes. God don't take our death lightly. Amen. If you want to use it, as I said Amen. before, make sure you give that grieving family that you quote in that verse too, give them the context. Why? Because context is everything. Amen. May we pray together tonight. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for our lesson. Father, I know it was mighty brief tonight, but Father, I just pray that we all can gather something from this verse. But, but not just this verse, but any verse we read, Father, help us to always look at the context. Yes. What did the authors intend? What was his intention when he says what he said? Whether we reading from the Psalms, or we reading from Jesus, whether we reading from Paul, or whoever. Father, help us to always keep it in the context. Again, Father, thank you for our lesson tonight. Thank you for the Holy Spirit and his illumination uh, for this verse in our lives. But we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Again, we appreciate you being with us. Looking forward to sharing another word on this coming Lord's Day. May God bless you. May God keep you safe is our prayer.